Hey, Cav Cop here. In this video, I want to go over Power Ordnance LDA. This pistol right here is known as the Black Watch. It's a CCO and has a 3.5 inch barrel. The reason it's called the Black Watch is it's named after the uh, Scottish 42nd Royal Highlands uh, Regiment, which is based on an infantry unit and they serve the Scottish military in England. They also ended up fighting here in America during the Revolutionary War and even the French and Indian Wars they played a part in. But let's go inside and go over this pistol and see what it's all about. Comes in black on the slide and green on the frame to represent the uh, 42nd Regiment that's colors were black and green. And the Black Watch is what they were known as. This pistol is named after them. All right, for those that don't know, uh, Power Ordnance kind of went out of business. They sold out to United States Company under Remington and some others. They became uh, Para USA, and Para USA no longer exists either. But this right here is a pistol that was made in Canada. This happened to be a pistol that when I was a supervisor over our CID section, doing investigations, working with detectives, um, what I carried when I was off duty or on call and stuff like that. And I'll go over some of the features of this pistol. It's kind of neat, some of the stuff that was incorporated into it. For those don't don't know, um, Power Ordnance did a lot of stuff for the 1911. They kind of changed the game a bit, but let's get into this pistol. All right, what makes this pistol rather unique is the fact that it is a double action 1911. And the LDAs, were kind of designed to target law enforcement and Power Ordnance was the very first 1911 maker to make a double action. They called it the LDA, a light double action and incorporate some neat things. They also uh, made this so it's more for law enforcement concealed carry type people and they focus on things like the serrations here. There's nine scallop cuts that are done in here and the nine of them are grooved pretty interestingly. The grip on it's actually pretty nice. And those same scallop cuts that are here represent six that are integrated into the rear of the slide where people would charge it. But it gives you a real nice place to grip things. Um, it does have a beaver tail safety. This does work as an actual safety, but it's a little bit different than a traditional 1911. If you get a good high grip with it, it does protect the back of the web of your hand. There is no spur back here, so you really don't have to worry about it that much, but it does give you a nice carry. They did do an extended safety release on it. So the safety is extended, but not the slide lock, which most people don't need that anyways. On the ejection port area here, they did two things that are kind of neat, or three technically, but they opened it up a bit. So you have a larger ejection port than the original 1911s have. They cut a front notch here, which a lot of people do as well. The front notch helps if you need to eject live rounds. So if you're trying to clear a weapon or something like that, the little notch that's cut here in 1911s helps with that. The rear part back here that's recessed a little bit, what it does is it helps eject fired cases. So when you have an empty spent shell casing, it kind of helps deflect it back. They also incorporated in here what they call their power extractor. And when I take the slide off, maybe I'll try and show you that. But the power extractor is also a neat thing. Going over with the safety features of this, we'll clear it and make sure nothing's in it. Empty magazine. Magazines are made by Para Ordnance out of Canada. All right, and we can see that it's clear and everything. Now with this pistol, when it goes forward, you'll notice that the hammer itself is forward. And as a double action works, it takes two actions, one to pull and then one to release. So as you pull the trigger, the hammer does come back. Now, if you happen to take your hand off of the beaver tail safety and everything, trigger won't work. However, the slide also will not retract. So when you don't have the grip safety done and you don't have the uh, safe, when you have the safety down and the grip safety is not depressed, you cannot rack it or do anything with it. Pulling the trigger doesn't do anything. If you grab the grip safety, you can work it, and then the slide itself will work as well. 
when you put the safety up, what it does is it actually disengages the trigger bar. So you can pull the trigger, but nothing will happen. So it's kind of neat without having the grip safety depressed or anything, you have a safety there. And if you depress it and you don't grab the grip safety, you also have a trigger, but you're not going to be able to bring the hammer bar back. But this is a nice thing for some law enforcement units. Um, my agency wasn't fussy, but a lot of units didn't want people to have single action pistols. They wanted them to have a double action pistol because they believed it was safer. Even though the safe action Glocks probably had more negligent discharges than 1911s did. But that was something that administrators wanted to do. My agency didn't do that. They just wanted a larger than 380 if it was going to be off duty caliber of a reliable make and model. And if you're carrying on duty, it had to be 9mm or larger. But the safety features on it kind of neat. In order to fire it, like I said, you just do the grip safety, pull the hammer back, kind of comes to a stage. And once the stage is there, about three and a half, four pounds, it breaks pretty easily. Obviously with a round in the chamber, it would cycle. And then you could just keep doing it over and over again. So unlike some single action, double action pistols like SIGs and other stuff, your first trigger pull, second trigger pull, third trigger pull, they're all gonna be the exact same trigger pull. The biggest thing you have to do is make sure that you charge the weapon, have a round in the chamber first, and then you can just activate the safety. So once it's loaded, you're set, hammers down, all you gotta do is swipe the safety down, which is extended, then pull the trigger and fire it, and it's semi-auto, so each time you're gonna get that double action pull. Let's see how easy it is to do the disassembly on camera. Off camera, it's pretty simple, but adds a little bit to the angle and everything. Just like a traditional 1911, you pull out the uh, takedown lever slide lock, and then the front slide comes off. If you look in here, you can see it's milled away. And what they have is they have the transfer bar that's in here. So instead of having a, a full slide rail on both sides like you normally would, you end up with a transfer bar that actuates the trigger and hammer assembly. And like I said, the grip safety deactivates uh, part of it, not the sear, but it blocks it. And then the same thing with the thumb safety um, locking into it. So the slide itself's milled and cut out a little bit different. Has your traditional tring double action trigger bar type setup. And it's kind of neat and unique in that aspect of it. But this is the main difference or innovation that they did to make it into a double action trigger for the 1911 series. And taking it apart, it's a 3.5 inch barrel which is longer than your traditional three inch barrels. Some people believe the longer barrel, the more reliability you get. Um, taking it apart as a semi-captured recoil spring system. I've never had the front spring come off, but I guess theoretically it could. Ah, I don't know why the plunger's not cooperating and staying in. Ah, there we go. A little miss set in there. But you have a reverse uh, recoil plug that goes in. And it just comes straight out. And then this is the recoil assembly. The spring really doesn't come off easily at all. Um, these are cut and notched a little bit different than some other uh, compact 1911 pistols. But you can find replacement parts through a few places. I think EGW or something like that has uh, replacement springs. But these right here are probably the most common thing you're going to want to replace every few thousand rounds. If you plan on... Uh, carrying or using these smaller 1911s. They do require frequent spring uh, recoil spring changes. The barrel comes out through the front if you fold this part down. And it is a uh, bold barrel. Basically uses the slide for the pressure fit of the, the ramp part along with integrating into the, the bushing. But it's a full bold barrel. It's uh, recessed for a crown has a locking lugs. It does have a link system, but it is a fully supported chamber and it is a ramp barrel. And the ramp barrel part's kind of neat. This uh, pistol itself is actually all stainless steel, so the finish on it's going to be good. The coating that's on here, I think I touched up a little bit of it here with some black paint, but it's been through some wear and been shot quite a bit, and overall it really hasn't 
worn down. It's held up pretty well, but there is some blemishes in the paint like you would expect, but the Paracoat, I guess, that they use, I think they call it, um, whatever material the Paracoat used, it's pretty durable overall compared to some other finishes and stuff that I've seen, and it's held up pretty well. Like I said, the worst part is some wear around here. It is fully uh, deburred, so there's no real sharp edges on it. Um, the front sights curved to the radius here. The rear sight, um, debatable. Some people like a ledge that you can do stuff on, but it's snag-free so that it's smooth and ramped going in both ways. The rear of it does have the serrations and everything, so if you're shooting in the sun or something like that, it'll help reduce some of the glare and everything. But overall, it's a pretty good design and everything. I think Power Ordnance hit a home run with this one. However, the company didn't last that long, and they ended up going out of business shortly after Remington and some others moved them to the United States. Go ahead and put this back together. All right, for reassembly, Pretty much just a reverse of uh, how you took it apart. Fold the link down, slide it straight in through the front area. You have your recoil bushing here. Goes down and just push it straight in. You have your recoil guide assembly. It should push straight in. And lock into place right there. Put it back on the slide. Slides back, then you gotta line the Lincoln stuff up and it should go into place lined up right about there. Get the initial pin in, then pull it back for where the witness mark part is and push straight in. It'll lock there. Rack the slide, dry fire it, rack the slide, put it on safe, doesn't fire, and that's basically it. But like I said, overall, I think it's a neat design that Power Ordnance did. Um, they were the first ones, like I said, to make a true double action pistol for the 1911. And they were also the ones that did the first double stack for the 1911. They're based out of Canada. And the two guys who built it were lifelong buddies. Um, one was, I think, from Hungary, and I think the other was from Greece. But they ended up designing uh, some stuff for the military dealing with like paintballs and stuff like that when they started out. Then they jumped in and created the uh, double stack 1911, the first high capacity 1911 on the market. And it was pretty much a success. Um, they didn't have a whole lot of offerings. They ended up downsizing them. When they got to the three inch uh, Warthog, I think it was that they made, they kind of ran into some issues there, but the rest of their pistols overall did well. Um, when they moved to Para USA, their quality and stuff kind of went down. They kind of went to mass production and uh, stuff changed. But I believe it was around 2007, one of the original uh, owner's designers passed away. And then shortly after that, around 2008, 2009, it got sold to the United States. So basically, when the owners of the company kind of sold it, when Remington picked it up, they kind of ran it into the ground, in my opinion. But like I said, the Canadian-made power ordnance pistols, I think, are great. The Florida and I think it was like North or South Carolina made ones are kind of so-so, but they're still neat pistols. If you can find them, do your research on them, but a lot of them are pretty good. And like I said, there were some innovators that advanced the 1911 like a lot of other people hadn't. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do me a favor and like, subscribe, and share if you would. Cav Cop out.